Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our daily devotionals. We thank the Lord that once again we can come to Him and we can worship Him in spirit and in truth as we meditate upon His Word this morning. If you have your Bibles with you, open it with me to the book of Psalms, specifically in, in Psalm chapter 40, verses 1 up to 3. We'll be looking into three verses only this morning. And again, we hope and pray that you would get out many wonderful truths or take out wonderful truths out of this passage this morning. Again, open your Bibles to Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter 40, verses 1 to 3. Let me read it to you coming from the English Standard Version, and you can just follow with your eyes as I read the passage. It says here, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. May God bless the reading of his word. Now again, Psalm chapter 40, as we all know, this is a psalm of David. And he penned this one during the time when he was in deep trouble. And most of the psalms that David wrote the background behind those psalms were are or the background behind all of those psalms are during the time when David was in deep trouble or when he was running away from his enemies, when he was trying to deal with his own problems, with his family, with his kingdom, and all of those things. And this is one of those psalms. This the background behind this psalm is one of those things that I have said with you or I have said to you a while ago. Now let's go through each of the verses and let's try to see what are the truths that we can get out of or we can take out of this passage it starts in verse 1 where david says i waited patiently for the lord now what do we need to learn from this truth this morning you know what david is saying here that he waited patiently for the lord he was not just waiting ordinarily he waited patiently for the Lord. And this is one of those Psalms also that we read about David saying that he waited patiently for the Lord. And in this Psalm, the only difference with those other Psalms is that in this Psalm, we find some several benefits out of waiting patiently for the Lord. Mind us, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we are to wait upon the Lord. Not just wait upon the Lord, but we need to wait upon the Lord patiently. You know what? Waiting is very difficult. And I've preached, I have preached many times about waiting patiently in the Lord. And I'm going to share this one with you again. Because I find it myself, based from my experience, I find it difficult when you wait upon the Lord patiently. Because as our nature as human beings, of course, we are so impatient. And when waiting comes, or when waiting is what's being talked about, if we find it hard to wait patiently for the Lord, but not with David, not with his experience. So let me share with you this morning some of the, the benefits out of waiting before the Lord patiently. It says here, I waited patiently for the Lord. And this is what we find as the first benefit of waiting patiently for the Lord. David says, He inclined to me. I waited patiently for the Lord and He inclined to me. You know what? When you talk about the word inclined, it simply means that we can get the picture of God bending down towards David in his adversities. We find a picture of God bending down towards David in all of his difficult circumstances. Now this is the product or this is the benefit when David waited patiently before the Lord. God came to his rescue. God came to help him. God came to bend over to David so that he would come to rescue David out of something that he was going through right at this moment of writing. My friends, this is a lovely truth that we need to learn in our lives. Sometimes God would want us to wait. Perhaps most of the time he would want us to wait. He would want us to wait for his perfect timing. And again, God doesn't operate according to our timetable. He operates according to his own timetable. And therefore, we need to wait upon him patiently. And you know what? When we wait patiently for the Lord, I guess this is one of those things that would happen to us as well. He would incline to us. He would incline to our cries. He would incline to, uh, incline to us in a way that He would bend over towards our situation and help us and sustain us and help us get through with it. My friends, this is one of the benefits that we get out of waiting before the Lord patiently. Secondly, David again says, He inclined to me and heard my cry. 
and heard my cry. Now, how many times have you cried before the Lord? This is not just any ordinary prayer when we talk about what David was trying to say right here. He was crying before the Lord. And this was, for me, personally, this is more than just an ordinary prayer. He was pouring his out heart as David was asking God to give him his favor, right? To come to his rescue. And sometimes, my friends, it, 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 takes, it takes crying out in order for us to be successful at waiting before the Lord patiently. You know what? As we relate this one to our situation right now, perhaps we need to be very patient. When it comes to waiting for the Lord to accomplish His will, to complete His plan with regards to this pandemic that we are in. And I know that God is already working out His plan even before this pandemic happened. And when this pandemic happened, God is already working out His plan. We just simply need to wait the, uh, un until the, the final fulfillment of the plan of God in using this pandemic that we are in. But we have been told right here in Psalm chapter, chapter 40 verse 1, we're still on verse 1, that we ought to wait patiently before the Lord so that as a result, as one of the benefits of waiting before the Lord, He is going to incline to us and He's going to hear our cry. Verse 2, it says, He drew me up from the pit of destruction. Take a look at this, um, take a look at this language that is used by King David right here. He says, He drew me up from the pit of destruction. I guess this is rendered differently in the New International Version, the older version of NIV, and I love how it is being rendered in that way. It says, I can't remember, but perhaps it says, He he drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry clay. Okay, David was talking about the miry clay. Now try to think of this. Pit of destruction. Try, try imagining yourself falling into a pit, right? Falling into a pit. When I was... Younger, when I was smaller, we used to have a well in our home, right? We used to have a well in our home. And whenever my sister and I would have an argument, whenever we would fight, my sister would always throw my sleepers into the well. And that well was not you know, not just any ordinary well. It was a very deep well. Now, I always imagined, what if I would fall into this well? I would fall into this pit. What would happen to me? Now, this, try imagining this situation from what David had experienced right here. He tried to use this language in trying to uh, he used this language in trying to say to us that he was in deep trouble. He was in a pit of destruction. Imagine when you are in a pit of destruction, when you are in a very deep pit, you are it, it only means that you are in a very desperate, you are in a very hopeless situation. But take a look at how David faced this hopeless situation. He just simply waited upon the Lord. Now, as I have said, whenever my sister and I would have a fight, he would always throw my sleepers. And of course, I was young, I was small, I can't pick that out. I can't pick my sleepers out of the well. So I just waited for my dad to pick it up for me, right? And this is the picture of what David is trying to say right here. Sometimes when we are in difficult situations, we find it hard to get out of it, right? Using upon using our own strength as human beings, we find it so hard to get out of a difficult situation, to get out of a, a pit of destruction. And you know what? The best thing that we need to do is not to exhaust our effort in trying to get out of that difficult situation, but we just need to simply wait upon the Lord. We just simply need to wait patiently upon the Lord's rescue. My friends, this is what David is telling us about right here. And you know what? This is not just any ordinary pit. He says, out of the miry clay, out of a muddy pit. Again, when you are, when you've fallen into a miry clay, when you fall into a pit that is muddy, of course, you would sink. You would surely sink. Imagine how troublesome this situation was. Imagine how troublesome this condition was that David, that King David was going through right here. And try to compare this with your life. Perhaps we might ask the question, um, is there any way out? of a very desperate of a very difficult situation sometimes we may think ah, with regards to covid 19 we just simply need to live with it we just simply need to live with this um with this problem with this adversity that we are in and you know what my brothers and sisters in christ we've been reminded right here that again we would only end up getting tired we would only end up get be uh, getting or being weary if we exert our own effort in trying to get out of a difficult situation. My friends, God is making it easier for us. We just simply need to wait patiently 
upon him. David says, He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog, and this is what God did to him, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. Instead of allowing David to fall deeper into that pit of destruction, God had taken him out of that pit and he established his feet upon a rock. Actually, there's a song no, written out of this psalm. You set my feet upon the rock, now I know. I... It's, an, it's an old song, right? But this that song is based upon this one. And you know what? God would sometimes let us go through difficult situations so that we can learn how to wait patiently for Him and we can learn how to wait upon His rescue. And when He comes to our rescue, grab ang favor ang sa ginoo. And we just simply need to relate this one with our situation right now. My friends, we are to wait patiently upon the Lord. Another benefit that we find, lastly, is in verse 3. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. You know what? Out of that difficult situation that David was in, it resulted into worship. It, it turned out into something that would make him worship God fully or worship God with all of his heart, with all of his life. My friends, this is something that we can relate to. God would always lead us to difficult situations. And we just simply need to wait patiently upon Him. We just simply need to wait patiently for His rescue. And He would surely take us out of the pit of destruction and He would establish our feet. And for sure, my brothers and sisters in Christ, the, pro the, the product or the, the result of that one is for us to give back to the Lord the glory that is due His name as we worship Him out of the difficulties that we have gone through. My friends, the purpose of all these difficult situations that we are in is for us to give glory to God. It's for us to turn our sorrows into worship, to turn our mourning into dancing, and to turn all of our problems, all of our weaknesses into adoring God and thanking Him and worshiping His holy name for what He has done to us. This is what David is saying. He went, went through a difficult situation, yet the Lord came to his rescue. And as a result of that, it turned out that he, he was worshiping God, despite of what he had gone through. And the last benefit that we find is that David says, Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. My friends, when we are waiting for God and His will to be fulfilled, we are also actually establishing, or He is also actually establishing our trust upon him my friends as we wait patiently for the lord i don't know what is it that you're going through right now but we are all in this difficult crisis right now but as we wait patiently for the lord's rescue may it be that we would learn how to trust in him we would learn how to fear his name by being reverential by showing our reverential fear before him and by putting our faith and our trust upon him my friends the benefits of waiting patiently for the lord is that he would inclined to us and hear our prayers he would rescue us from the pit of destruction and he would turn our mourning into dancing he would turn our sorrows into gladness let us pray father in heaven lord we thank you for what you have spoken today salamat lord god for encouraging us and for lifting us up through your word that whenever we are going through difficult situations lord one of the lessons you would want us to learn is to wait patiently for you to wait patiently on how you are going to incline to us and hear our prayers with regards to what we are going through right now. Lord, perhaps you've been waiting long enough. Some of us might have thought that we have we, we have waited long enough and there's no more room for waiting. But Lord God, until your purpose is fulfilled, we just simply need to keep on waiting patiently for you. And as we wait for you, oh God, help us to strengthen our faith and trust upon you and we know god that you're going to incline to us you're going to hear our cries and you're going to rescue out of the pit of destruction lord god we give you glory and honor and praise and thank you for what you have spoken to us this morning in the name of jesus christ we pray amen and amen. that's all for today see you again tomorrow god bless and bye-bye